Hallelujah. Father, once again, we thank you. Thank you for sending your servant to us to be a blessing to us. Thank you for changing our lives. We will not be the same again. We give you praise. In this second session, speak to us again. Turn our lives around. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Hallelujah. Thank you once again, sir. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, we have 45 minutes more before um, the morning session closes, so I'll share something with us for the next 45 minutes. Amen. Um, Pastor was supposed to be here this morning, but he couldn't be here because of circumstances beyond his control. Amen. You know, but he'll be here this evening. He'll be here this evening. Hallelujah. You're not clapping in faith. But I'm sure He'll be here this evening. Amen. You know, and um, I want to acknowledge, you know, him one more time. You know, is once I have an opportunity to speak, I always acknowledge pastor because um you know no human being has changed my life no human being has affected my life has impacted my life like my father has have impacted my life 21 years i've known him it's been from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory amen god has used him tremendously to shape my life and i owe him this life i you know, I, I say it even in heaven. I want to serve him. I want to serve him even in heaven. It's the best thing that has happened to me after Jesus Christ. Please, can we appreciate God's servant? Can we honor him? Hallelujah. And also our mommy, Pastor Sarah. You know, the most amazing woman I've met in my life. So gracious, so virtuous, so large hearted so large hearted amen we are blessed to be in a family like this we are blessed amen i said if there is reincarnation i'll still be in dominion city amen god has raised me here i actually got born again here 21 years ago so i, I didn't come from somewhere i got saved in this ministry grew here became a pastor here amen okay I want to share something with us this morning um, for the next couple of minutes. And, you know, Apostle has shared a lot with us. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Um, Psalm 126, I just picked the first verse there. And um, he said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. You know, for many years, for many, many years as a Christian, I was in financial captivity. Nothing worked. When I mean nothing, I mean nothing. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. Of course, I came from a poor family where nothing was working. Amen? And five years as a graduate, nothing was working. I got to a point where I started doubting if I was ever going to get married. I'm telling you the truth. Because I couldn't feed myself. So I was wondering, how can I feed a woman? Talk less of children. How can I buy pampas? I looked into the future and couldn't see anything. It was that bad. I started doubting if I were ever own a house in this life. Drive a car in this life. You know, the future looks so so bleak. Praise the Lord. You know, until certain things came across my way. You know, and the things I heard pastor share. You know, and they've altered my life completely. That when I look back today, I'm so amazed. I'm so dumbfounded at the magnitude of what God has done and what he will still do. Can I hear an amen? amen. 
And I trust God that from this conference, people's testimonies will change. People's story will change. If you believe me, can I hear a big amen? amen. You know, but, um, you know, having heard some of those things, and one particular year, I sat down in January, and I did an audit of my life. And I saw the many things that were not working. And I started trying to find the reasons why they were not working. Amen? And I found three major things, but I'll discuss two. I'll just discuss two. I'll discuss two. I found three major things I was not doing. But let me read the scripture. Psalm 119, verse 67. Psalm 119, verse 67. Because I don't know who I'll be able to help today. By the grace of God. The same way pastor has helped me tremendously. God has used him to help me. Okay, can we read together? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. You know, years ago, the Holy Ghost so amplified this scripture for me. Because I used to quote, affliction will not come a second time. Affliction will not come a third time. You know, how many of you know that scripture? And the Holy Ghost said to me, as long as you keep going astray from my word, affliction will come a second time. Affliction will come a third time. Affliction will come a fourth time. And my whole life was filled with affliction. But when I sat down, I realized that the root of my affliction was areas of my life where I knew God's word, but I was ignoring it. I knew God's word, but I was not practicing it. I knew God's word, but I was not doing anything about it. And I paid for it. And some of us, under the sound of my voice, we are paying for it. So those two areas is what I want to discuss today. The first area for me was Titan. Titan. Seven years as a Christian, I was a tight eater. I became a pastor. I was eating tight as a pastor. As a pastor. And I suffered as a pastor. If God did not pity me who was preaching for him, he will not pity you. Please tell somebody for me. If God did not pity me who was preaching for him, he will not pity you. I suffered as a pastor. I faced humiliation upon humiliation. I think then I was pastoring Dominions in Oware. You know, is there anybody here that knows Oware very well? I have trekked from Oware to Nekede three times by foot. It's like trekking from, um, from Aja here to where? Maybe from Aja to Ikeja. Yeah, from Aja to Ikeja. Three times. Three good times. Why? I didn't have transfer money. No money for food, no money for transfer. How much is transfer? Sometimes 50 naira. I could not afford it. I have to trek that. Sometimes I'll be trekking it in the night. And that is half of the trekking. I will not get to Oware, finish what I'm doing, and trek from Oware back to Nekede. So imagine trekking from here to Ikeja. You finish, you turn again in the night and trek from Ikeja back to Aja. And I was expecting things to change, but nothing was changing. I prayed for things to change, and nothing was changing. And that year when I sat down, and God started putting his finger, he said, see, tight, you will not pay. I cannot remember in those seven years, paying my tight for three months consecutively, talk less of one year. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. Three months consecutively. Is it that I pay in January, I eat in February, I eat in March, maybe after camp meeting, small revelation, I'll pay, may I start eating. And it was the order of the day. And life was so tight for me. You know, there's something pastor taught is in the Bible that when you eat your tight, 
you should add 20% when you're about to pay it. So I'll eat the tithe, then when I'm about to pay, I'll collect 20%. No, I'll add 20%. And keep the tithe and the 20%, then I'll have an issue. I collect both the tithe and the 20% and eat it again. It was the order of the day. To cut the long story short, um, a particular year I had an armed robbery attack and I almost died. But God saved my life, you know, with pastor's prayer and all that, and I'm still alive till today. But to tell you the truth, I use my tithe to undertake that journey. Tithe. I used my tithe to undertake that journey. And on my way back, I had an arm robbery attack. If I had died, people would not hear this side of the story. They would think that God failed. They would think that the covenant failed. They would not know that PCJ, the tithe eater, that God has been warning. And it was after that experience, I sat down to review my whole life. And I checked. You know, if you were here, if you were here on Thursday night, Apostle Bentobe was sharing. He said he has never seen anybody who has been eating his tight and who can say that that tight he's been eating has moved his life forward. I checked my own life. He has not moved my life forward. Not in any way. So I made the decision that day, 14 years ago, that I will never eat my tithe another day in my life. Of course, when I was dating my wife, you know, when we were cutting, one day I came to her house, you know, she, she remember the story, I knew she didn't have money, and she cooked this fantastic okra soup. And we were talking, I said, ah, how did you get the money to cook the okra soup? She said, it's her tithe. I was so angry. I banged her door and walked out of her house. Because I didn't want to marry somebody that would return me to where I was coming from. <laughs> so that okra soup caused a major problem. And I never ate it. I'm glad today, 14 years after, Tithe has not been used to cook okra soup, cook afang soup, cook banga soup in my house. Praise the Lord. And amazingly, God has blessed us, he has lifted us, and everything changed. Can I hear an amen? amen? Can I hear a big amen? amen? And I used to think that prosperity was a promise. Something you have to claim. And I was claiming it. I was claiming it. I was claiming it. I was claiming it. But it was not showing up. Until one day pastor thought, he said, prosperity is not a promise. Prosperity is a covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, verse 17 and 18. He said, it's not a promise. It's not something that you claim. It's a covenant that you walk in. You know, God said to the Jews, if you will walk in my covenant, I will set you above all the nations of the earth. It's, it's a covenant. And for the first time, I saw it that it's a covenant. It's an agreement. What is a covenant? Okay, let me read first. And thou say in your heart, my power... And the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt what? Remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee what? Power. Supernatural power to make wealth. Why? That he may what? Establish his covenant. Which is what to your fathers. As it is this day. So he said he answers to covenant. You want money. You want to prosper, discover the covenant, and keep the covenant. And I said to the Lord, what is a covenant? Amen. And he said, one of them is that God said, I'm going to help you make money. I will supply you favor. I will supply you opportunities. I will give you breakthrough ideas. I will use my angels to even protect your investments. I will do this, I will do that. But when you get the money, 10% of it belongs to me. I use it to fund my kingdom. Amen? But that is even the foundation of stewardship. Because in real stewardship, the 100% belongs to God. The 100 belongs to God. All the money in your hand belongs to God. But 
baby still worship. Baby still worship, which is nursery school of still worship, is 10%. That 10% of everything you earn, it goes to God, but God supplies you the opportunities to make money, supplies you favor, supplies you different things. I want to ask you a question. This deal, is it a bad deal? An example, you go to the president now. He tells you, okay, I'm going to give you an oil well. Amen? I'll talk to the, you know, you know, the minister for works. Any contract you want, just go. They will give you the contract. I'm responsible. I use Nigerian soldiers to, you know, to guard your pipelines and all that, protect your investment. But in this deal, take 90 and give me 10. Please, is he a good deal? Is he a good deal? So this is a kind of deal that God gave to us. But the problem is that God is in heaven. He is very far. So we collect the 90 and still tell God, you are very far. You can't come down for the 10. I will eat it. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Apostle was sharing on Thursday night. He said there is a difference between stealing and robbery. That in stealing, you come from behind. In robbery. They all put gun on God's head. Your money or your life. And people just, and I was doing this thing for seven whole years. For seven whole years. So by the time I realized that it answers to covenant. It's a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between two people. That states, okay, I will do this. Why you do this? An example, when you have people who are getting married, and you bring two of them to the altar, praise the Lord, you bring two of them, they enter covenant, they exchange vows. You know, so we give the man vows, and we turn to the man and do what? And also give her vows. Anytime you see a good marriage, is because those two people are keeping their vows. It's because those two people are keeping the obligations in that covenant. What we have found out, a lot of people enter a covenant, eh? they know the other person's obligation. They know what the other person should do, but they don't know what they should do. I'll give you an example. You see a couple. Amen? You see a couple. They are doing morning devotion. It's the man's turn to do Bible reading. He said, today our Bible reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25. Wives, submit to your husband. He tell the children, say it again. <laughs> Wife, submit to your husband. <laughs> then the day is the woman's turn. She will open first Timothy. There's there's the one women like. He that does not take care of his household <laughs> is worse than an infidel. He has denied. Somebody shall deny the faith. <laughs> All the children will be shouting to their father, deny the faith. <laughs> deny the faith. So the woman is preaching to her husband. What the husband should do. But in a covenant, the most important thing is what? Is to know your own role. To know your own what? To know your own obligation. Most times we know God's own. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. My God. And we are quoting all the words that God should do. But our own part of the covenant, our own obligation in the covenant, we have not done. This is what I did for seven years and the covenant did not deliver to me. I was a Christian. I was serving God. I was a pastor. I was preaching. But nothing was happening for me. And this is the state of some people. And I said, you have entered the whole 2015. Do you know in the last how many years I've been preaching? Almost every church I have done this. Almost every church. I don't get up to 20%. If I ask how many of you, you have paid your tithe faithfully for one year, just one year. I ask them to raise their hand. I ask them to, if you like, we'll try it here. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. 
you'll be shocked. Less than two, one year, one year. But I'm telling you, standing here, 14 years, I have not eaten tight. And God has blessed me. The Bible says, God is a rewarder. Hebrews 11 verse 6, of them that what? That diligently, that consistently seek him. So God has helped me to be consistent for 14 years. And I have seen that this God is faithful. I have seen that this God pays. But the first seven years of my Christianity, there was high level inconsistency. And I couldn't. I couldn't put my hand on one thing that I can say, okay, God has lifted me from this level and has moved me to another level. If you're following me, can I see your hand? Can I see your hand? So, a lot of people come to church. For example, see last night, you know, why Pastor Mike was, well, everybody is shouting because shouting is the easiest thing in the kingdom. Amen. You will hammer this year. Amen. You will. She sued this year. Amen. The one shouting amen has not paid tight from January till now. <laughs> it's shocking. It's shocking. And I used to do it all. I will shout the loudest amen while pastor is preaching. Yeah, nothing was changing. And that's how people have been shouting and nothing is changing. And sometimes we need to settle down to hear teaching like we heard this morning. Because at the end of the shouting, you know sometimes as pastors, there are even things we prophesy that we know it will, happen, it will not happen for everybody. All of you will have an A this semester. It's a lie. Some people will have F9, some will have G10. Because they did not read for that exam. Can I hear an amen? amen. So the tight. The tight. Why? Because what God checks is faithfulness. His faithfulness. His faithfulness. That's what we'll be hearing. We have heard it today. We also heard it on Thursday. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Do you know at the point where I decided to become a faithful titan, my yearly income, the year before, was 40,000 naira. A whole year, I didn't say a month. A whole year. And I was a pastor. Five years as a graduate. 40,000 naira, a whole year. Today, I'm sure in the last two years, if I check... I check all the seeds I've sown. It's not less than 40 million. It's not less than 40 million in the last two years. From 40,000 naira a year to 40 million naira seed in the last two years. A seed, though, I'm not talking about harvest. How? Because God started seeing a man, a man that used to be very unfaithful, he could not rely on, but now he's seen the man. I can trust him with this. I can trust him with that. I can trust him with that. I can trust him with that. And some of us have come to the altar now. We repented, made commitment. Now go ahead and keep that commitment. You will see God. You will see God. Pastor said God doesn't, he doesn't give you what you need. He gives you what you can manage. He gives you what he can trust you with. The question is, can God trust you with one million naira? Can God trust you with 10 million? And if he puts 10 million in your hand, he will not hear a story about the 1 million. Some people say, Lord, Lord, I will surprise you. I will surprise you. I tell them, the Lord is already surprised. He's already surprised at the level of your tight eating. Surprised at the level of your stinginess. I will surprise you. He's very surprised. Very surprised. I was praying for a man years ago. Somebody was owing him 60,000 naira. 60,000. So I prayed. The person rushed and paid him. I said, he called and brought the tithe. 6,000. 6,000. And paid. Then he told me, Pastor, there are, this, there, are, there are these two other guys owing me. One is owing me 250,000. Another one is owing me 2.5 million. And I prayed with him. The 250,000 paid 25,000. Hey! I did not see. The tide disappeared. <laughs> because it goes to the person. 25,000 is too much to give to God. How can a human being borrow 25,000 near church? 
How can a woman carry 25,000 and give to church and give to God? So, they are, and he met me and said, Pastor, you know, you know that other guy, 2.5 million. I'm being a compassionate pastor. I was praying. The Holy Ghost said to me, Stop praying. I will not answer. You're wasting your time. Until I left that town, he did not answer. Because if 25,000 is too big for God, 2.5 million <laughs> is out of this world for you. That's what people do. Because you see some people, they can pay small tight. What's the money? Ah. Then greed. They just wear the glasses of greed. One million naira. Tight. Because of what? They will start finding scriptures. Please ask somebody for me. Can God trust you one million naira tight? I prayed with another guy. You know, I met him in Abuja. I pastored him in Enugu. He will come to me. You know, then he will come and sow seed. 3,000 naira. Sometimes time. Struggling. So he went for, he, he, he went for his, you know, his youth service in Abuja. So I, I came in there for a meeting and saw him. He was pursuing a contract. I just held his hand. Asked God to help him. And they gave him the contract. He stood there in Abuja. He got a contract of 1 billion naira. He called me on phone. He was shouting. I said, what are you He said, Pastor, God has made me a king in this city. I said, wow. Then later, I called Pastor Nobs. I said, that guy. Did he pay tight? He said, for where? I'm waiting for him. Because kanka warm. Palma warm. Plus Abuja warm. Very soon. Because I'm sure by the time he finished the contract, calculated the profit, hey. He said, man, is this what a human being will carry and give to God? I'm not stupid. I said, IK, you're not stupid. And that was the end. He was launching Jeep, launching this, launching that. And this is how. How many years have passed? I've not heard of any other contract now. If you're following me, can I see your hand? Because that is a big question. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? What can God trust you with? What can God trust you with? You know, there's a politician I pastor. How's that this guy? Man, he just eat tight. Eat, eat everything. Until he was liquidated. He was liquidated. He told me with his own mouth. He said, Pastor, I had to buy an exercise book. When people dash me 1,000 naira, 1,000, a whole politician, he said, I'll record it. I'll remove the tight. I'll record it beside 100. By, by the time a politician will buy an ex exercise book, like my children in primary school, to be recording. You know that life has taught him a lesson. Life has taught him a lesson. But when he, he now became faithful, I started doing all the things that he would do. I remember one particular day, you know, they told me that the church generator was spoiled and it was 800,000 naira to fix the gen. And I was saying, am I going to come and climb this puppy to start raising 800,000? I said, I will not talk about it. Lord, you handle it. I just finished preaching and came to my office and sat down. The same man, he said, he said, Pastor, I want to see you. I said, fine. I sat down. He brought out his checkbook. He said, I want to pay my tithe. He wrote 800,000 and paid as tithe. That's how we fix the gen. So God saw, okay, there's a need of 800,000. Who can I pass 8 million through his hand? Who can I pass 8 million through his hand? And I'm sure that this 800,000 will get into my kingdom. And he saw a man that bought the exercise book. Who? Because if you're not faithful with little things, you will not be faithful with big things. If God cannot trust you with 10,000, he cannot trust you with 1 million. He could not trust me for many years. Many years. But today, he's trusting me with millions. He's trusting pastor with all kinds of wealth. Hallelujah. The Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has what has prepared for them that love him. You know, the great servant of God was sharing on our robots. You know, he said, 
his first son, I think he lost his first son, and he went to the, during the burial, you know, he was standing, you know, before the coffin, and he was weeping, he was weeping, and he was telling the son, he said, you have robbed me, you have robbed me, all the plans I had for you, you have robbed me completely, and God spoke to him, he said, it's the same way my people have robbed me. He said, when I'm shouting in Malachi, apart from the fact that they've stolen from me, but all the plans I have for them, all the big plans I have for them, just small money I give them so I can trust them with it, so that other dimensions of things can open up in their life. They just robbed me of the opportunity to display my power, to display my love, to display my splendor on their lives. He just touched one million naira. He just disappeared. What about 10 million? What about 100 million? What about 1 billion? So, if you see the amount of things that the unfaithfulness we are demonstrating is keeping from happening for us, it will blow our minds. It will blow our minds. Can I hear a big amen? Please, can I hear a bigger amen? Amen. Can I hear the loudest amen? Amen. Somebody shout, Lord, you can trust me. I can't hear you, Lord, you can trust me. You can trust me with 100,000. You can trust me with 1 million. You can trust me with 10 million. I actually say to career people, the greatest way to show that you're serious about Titan is to give a standing order on your account. An example, when you pay your tax, government does not consult you. Before you see the money, tax has disappeared. True of us. Because there are some of us, <laughs> if they pay you your salary with a tax, that is the end. Even Buhari combined with our bacha and a diabo cannot collect the tax. You know, so what normally happens is that the tax is removed. You have never seen the tax. They remove it from your salary, and you just get your salary. 119,000, 300,000, 520,000. You don't see the tax. So the same way, if you want to say that you're genuine about this thing called Titan, give a standing order on your account. You call your banker, my salary is maybe 500,000. The tithe is 50,000 naira. Eh? Every 28th of the month, don't call me. 50,000. You must go. Somebody say, God forbid. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because you see people, if they call another altar call, they will come again and they are repenting. They call another altar call, they come again and they are repenting. There is no need for the repentance. Give a standing order. See an example as a pastor. Praise Lord, I'm paid a salary. You can ask people that work in the finance department. I don't see my tithe. They remove the tithe and pay the balance, pay the balance into my account. I don't see the tithe. The tithe disappears. He's an invisible man. Disappears. So that way, I'm not facing temptation. I'm not facing it. He just disappears. So this Monday, this Monday, this Monday, stop repenting. Go and put a standing order. It shocks me. People do it when they are buying a house. You know, they are paying mortgage. They just call the bank, da, 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 every month, remove 120,000, don't even consult me. But we'll not do it for tight. We'll not do it for tight. Then we'll come and be repenting and be deceiving ourselves. And in the end, all the amazing things that should be happening is not happening. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? Okay, I have 12 more minutes. Now, the second that wrecked my life was vows. Vows. In those days, I would travel down for a program, a convention, a camp meeting, or something. And they just call for vow. I just come out. Maybe there. 100,000. 100, I just come out. I make the vow. Enter the next vehicle. 
And I'm telling you, I will say to myself, do they catch breeze? I mean, do you catch, do you catch a wind? No. I will enter the vehicle. I'm gone. But I did not know that as I'm entering the vehicle, canker worm, palmer worm, caterpillar, and locusts were following me inside the same vehicle. Because in the realm of the spirit, there is no distance. And my whole life was a mockery, was a joke. I will make the vow. I will not even make a single effort to pay that vow. I will just disappear. And then there was no GSM. So you can't even get me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 25. Let's just read that. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 25. Proverbs 20, verse 25. You know, it, it deals with two powerful things. He said, it is a snare. It's a trap. What? To the man who what? Devoured that which is what? Is holy. Like the tithe is holy. You know, actually the Bible calls it the tithe. We call it my tithe. You will never hear in the Bible your tithe. It's not your tithe. It's the tithe. It belongs to God. It's holy unto God. It's not yours. Okay? But see the next one. Uh -huh. And after vows to do what? To make inquiry. Somebody finishes making a vow. He said, now how far? How far? Um, you know, how far? An example, one lady told me, went somewhere. She made a vow of one million. He said, pastor, I don't know how I made this vow Pastor Mike was preaching. He said, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So when I was coming out, the choir started singing, all things are possible. <laughs> he said, but now I regret it. I said, no, you don't regret it. You make vow by faith. You also redeem it by what? By faith. It stretches you. Amen. It's not as if, you know, that you have the whole money. It's not as if you have the whole money. An example, the last Dominion Convention now, you know, the vow I made is 20 million naira. I don't have the 20 million. But I've released my faith. As at now, I paid 4 million. I paid 4. As I'm trusting God, it's coming into my hand, I'm paying. It's coming, I'm paying. It's coming, I'm paying. Next thing, I pay the 20 million. And I go my way. Because the mistake that people make is that they are waiting for the whole 20 million to enter their hand. Lord, I vowed 100 Million. So five million enter. I say no. It's not hundred million yet. Carry it and buy a car. Then another one will enter. He say no. Uh, <laughs> five hundred thousand. Let me travel to Dubai. Then when you finish, I've had something like that. You know, I was believing God for an amount of money, and in the end, I say, Lord, you have not given me the money. He said, I've given it to you. I say, no way. I have not seen it. He said, bring pen and paper. I brought pen and paper. He said, the other day, I gave you this one. I gave you this. I gave you. When I added it up, it was in excess of what I asked him. I said, child, Lord, I've died it all. <laughs> it was a big lesson for me that sometimes God does not give you the whole money in bulk. He was talking to them about the promised land. He said, I'll give you the promised land what? Little by little. So sometimes that's how money comes. And people throw it away. And they conclude that the money for their vow has not come. Meanwhile, a lot of money has passed through their hands. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? So he said, it is a snare. After making vow, you abandon the vow, you ignore the vow, and just, you know, because vows are sacred before God. When you come before God and say something to him, God holds it. He holds it seriously. There's a man that made a vow in the Bible. His name was Jephthah. How many of you know the story? Jephthah. Jephthah said to God, if you give me victory in this battle, and I come out of this battle, anything that comes out of my house first, I will give it to you. And, and God gave him victory. Only to come back, and it was the daughter that came out first. He screamed, Chai! Daughter, you have killed me. 
So the daughter said, okay, please give me 30 days. Let me at least play with my friends and all that after you can fulfill your vow. I'm sure in those 30 days, he was waiting to hear a voice like Abraham. Jephthah. Jephthah. Lay not your hand on that child, for I have provided myself a ram. Jehovah Jireh. 30 days passed. He didn't hear the voice. Then he carried the girl and tied the girl. I was still waiting to hear a voice. Because Abraham's own was not a vow. Abraham's own, it was God that spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, offer Isaac to me. And God said, okay, since you have already killed, since you have killed Isaac in your heart, I know I can trust you. Oh, I have seen ram. Kill the ram. Jephthah, there was no ram. There was no goat. There was no cow. There was no fowl. Because it's a vow. Jephthah was bringing down his hand. He was looking up to heaven. Lord, what are you saying? God said, I'm reading my Bible. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying nothing. What you have said before me, do. And he did it. He did it. Amen? And God gave him dominion. His children were reigning and all that. Amen? Because when you come before God and say something to God, God holds it. He wants you to do it. And when you do it, he does much more than the vow that you made. A good example is Anna. That say, Lord, if you give me a baby, a, a male child, I'll give the child back to you. And she fulfilled the vow. Guess what happened? She had five more children. If she had held that her vow and said, thank God, <laughs> Lord, you know you have answered. I've been looking for this child. I know that the way to get you to answer. You're a businessman. <laughs> so I gave you a deal. He said, no, no, come and take the child now. She would have had only one child. But she brought that vow. Because it's easy. I, in a simple, they come and say, Lord, you give me the money, I'll give it to you. Then God gives them the money. And he's talking to them. He say, no, twice have you spoken, no one have I heard. No one have I heard. I'm not hearing anything. And I used to do it for many, many years. Many, many I will make vow, I will not pay. I will make vow, I will not pay. But the last 14 years, I've taken my vow seriously. And he has changed my whole life. He has changed my whole life. I remember one vow that pastor made. He went to our church in Abakalik when they were building that church. And he saw the state of stuff. He made a vow of 10 million naira. He came and carried his land in, in Lagos yeah, and sold it. And send the money. It was Pastor Nobad that was there. And just, you know, they raised that building. I remember then I was in Enugu. You know, there was some money on top. He sent it to me. He said, I should complete the building in Enugu. And that was his land. He didn't have the cash. He collected his land. Sold it. And distributed the money. Paid the vow. Carried the one on top. And finished another building. In that same state where he made that vow. And completed the vow. One day, you know, in the government house, they had their morning devotion. And they just finished the morning devotion like this. And the governor was so happy. He said, ask me anything. Anything you want. Pastor was calculating. He said, what will I ask? He asked him for land. Land. To build Dominion University. 3,000 hectares. I didn't say hectares. Hectares of land. The governor said, fine. When he came to collect the paper, they gave him 5,000 hectares of land. I don't think you hear what I said. 5,000 hectares of land. Imagine if he did not pay that vow. Imagine if he held that one plot of land. 5,000 hectares of land would not have been a reality. I don't know what you're holding from happening. You know, that's why I came to address these two things today. There are many other things I could have talked about. Because somebody said, why is my testimony not happening? Why Everybody is testifying. Why is my own not happening? Because you have not even sowed a seed. A vow is not a seed. It says seed time and harvest, not vow time and harvest. You have made vow. The vow is not seed. I came and made a vow of 20 million. I have not sold a seed though. 
have not, and I'm not deceiving myself. So where is God going to give me harvest from? Then I now started. I'll get one million, five hundred thousand. Another one million. And now I've done it. I've done four million. So I have seeds in the ground. And guess what? In the last, everywhere I go now, money is following me. Everywhere I go, ev everywhere I go, money. And I'm asking myself, what is happening? Everywhere I go, money is following me. It doesn't happen like that all the time. More. So it's time to convert that vow to what? Seed. He made a vow of one million. You can put a seed of 100,000 into the ground and start with it. And start with it. And start with, based on what you have. There is something that you have. You don't make a vow. And as the pastor said, anytime he makes a vow, even sometimes he will suspend Christmas celebration in his house. You see, this year's Christmas is a low key Christmas. I have a vow that I made. The whole family, everybody must sacrifice. And he makes sure that vow is paid. Then a whole new season opens. All kind of stuff. Now begins to happen. I have experienced it again and again. I've also experienced the other side of the equation. Can I hear an amen? amen. I said, can I hear an amen? amen? Because everybody must have a testimony. I said everybody must have a testimony. Amen. But there are things hanging some of these things. There are things hanging it. Unpaid vows. And the eating of tithes. And God is a, is a covenant keeping God. You don't do your part. An example. You know, as a good man in my house. If I'm providing money for food. And my wife will not buy food. She will go and buy hair. Indian hair. Um, another hair. Obama short hair. And just, be, and just be decorating herself with hair. Then buy cosmetic. I'll keep bringing money or somewhere. She will know that I know all the mama put in Lagos. After a while, I'll stop bringing. When I close some work, I'll just buy somewhere. i say, what do you have there? Beans, 50 naira, rice. When I come back, I'll be singing. Lord is good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. Simple. Because that's how it is. You can't keep. So God will not keep blessing. When people are violating the covenant. Can I hear an amen? amen. Did you get something today? Yeah. Lift up your hands. Let's bless Jesus. Let's bless Jesus. Let's bless Jesus. I just want you to make two commitments today. Lord, in 2016, I'll be a faithful tighter. I'll be a faithful tighter. I have shouted amen. I have done all that. But I want to practice the covenant. I want to do the things that work. be a faithful title. Lord, from now on, when I make a vow, I will put in every effort. I will go out on my, I will not make a vow and abandon it and go my way. No. I have said something before you. I will do everything within my power in order to keep these vows. Because I know that you are faithful. I will show my own self faithful. Go ahead and talk to him. 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 Because something is about to shift for you. We are removing the little foxes that spoil the vine. Let them all clear from the way. So you can see the glory of God. You can see the glory of God. So that mighty things can roll into your life. Because God is faithful. Because God is faithful. Just talk to him. for grace ask him for help he has helped me that i've done it for 14 years it's not by power it's not by might. it's his grace ask him for grace to be a faithful titan Lift up your hands. To be faithful to your kingdom, Jesus. With all my heart.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, accept the commitment of your people from the genuineness of their hearts. From the genuineness of their hearts. Where they have disobeyed by the blood of Jesus Christ, wipe it for them. Wipe it for them. All those things counting against them. Let it be wiped by the blood of Jesus. Give them a clean slate as we come to the end of 2015 and as we step into 2016 that every single one of them will now walk in the covenant and as they walk in this covenant that you will lift them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ into the realms of millions realms of multiplied millions tens of millions hundreds of millions that limitations in their finances will be broken because you can trust them you can trust them you can trust them with mega wealth that is what I ask you to do. That is what I ask you to do. We give you praise. We give you glory. Just wave those hands and thank you. Just wave those hands and thank you. Just wave those hands and thank you.